my first contact with uh, Father John Predash was in March of 92. I was uh, named uh, by Pope John Paul II as the second Bishop of Tyler. And I was uh, supposed to come up here to Tyler on a Tuesday morning in March for the announcement. And of course, it's, it's under pontifical secrecy. You're not supposed to tell anybody you're going to be the bishop until it's announced. So I was calling uh, the cathedral here, and I was calling any priest I could find to f find out, you know, uh, can I stay someplace uh, on Monday night? Uh, you know, what can I do? And finally, I called Father Predash, and he was at uh, the hospital. He was the chaplain at the hospital at that time, and I told him I was Bishop Carmody, and I was going to be visiting Tyler on uh, Monday, and uh, I wanted to know where I could stay. And he was a very kind and very gentle and very accommodating and offering all kinds of possibilities of where I, I could be taken care of and that I was welcome, that I couldn't say I'm, I'm going to be your bishop, but uh, that I was going to be there on that Monday night. And uh, it was a very, very wonderful conversation I had with him. I didn't know who he was. I knew nothing about his background. I just found uh, the name of the priest at the hospital, so that's the reason I called him. Then when I came up here as bishop, I met him many times, and I always found him as a gentle, kind, loving priest. Uh, very compassionate, uh, very good to the patients in the hospital. And because of his background and experience, he knew what suffering was, he knew what loss was, he knew what death was. And so he was very, very helpful to the patients in the hospital. He was an ideal chaplain because uh, not alone did he have book learning with regard to how to take care of patients, but he experienced the suffering and the death of many people. And as a result, he was a kind, loving, compassionate priest, a delight to be with and a blessing to the hospital and a blessing to uh, everybody here in Northeast Texas. As the Bishop of Tyler at that time, when John Predash died, it was my uh, duty, my privilege, uh, as the Bishop of Tyler, to uh, go through uh, what he had left behind, to go to his apartment and dispose of, you know, his goods and chattels. And as I went through them very carefully, because uh, these were, uh, you know, what he left behind were, were treasures to him. And I found uh, this ring, and I thought it was very, very unusual. It's a rosary ring. Uh, it would have one, one cross, and then it had uh, 10 little marks for each Hail Mary. And uh, then, you know, uh, when I was leaving uh, the Diocese of Tyler to, I was transferred to Corpus Christi, then uh, I was, you know, putting all my goods and chattels together, and that ring, of course, was part of it. And that I knew that ring could not come with me, although it was, you know, in my possession. I could not come with me because it, it had to stay in Tyler. It belonged in Tyler. It belonged in the archives in Tyler. When I first started working in the archive room, uh, it was it had been pretty neglected for many years. So it was pretty much like going into the attic for the diocese. There was literally a little path on the floor and stuff stacked everywhere. So I just started going through things and what was important, put in one pile and shredded everything that was junk. And I found this small white box, cardboard box that had nothing written on it, but there was an envelope with Mary Sedbury's name on it and this ring was in it and all of Father Predesh's belongings that small amount that was left was in the box. So I was looking at his passport and everything and um, obviously thought it was a really interesting story. I looked up his file in the, uh, we have a file of priests who were formerly in the diocese. I found his file and just read the whole story. And that's how I found it. Just literally found it. 
So in researching the story, we knew that we had to research the ring because um, this ring, because it's, it's made of, of bronze, it's not a precious metal, it's a little bit roughly made, a little bit amateurishly made, um, and it's stamped or it's hand etched uh, with Dachau um, and that date, June 24th, 1944. Um, it, seems, it's, it seems overwhelmingly likely that it was something made in the camp, but it's not certain, and we had to be certain, that it wasn't something that was made later after the war as a commemoration, because if it was made in the camp, this would be an important artifact. So we started out by taking good, high-quality photos of the ring, and we sent these to all of the Holocaust museums and researching institutions in the world. We corresponded with the museum at Dachau. We corresponded with Yad Vashem uh, in Israel. We corresponded with Auschwitz. Uh, we corresponded with the American Holocaust Museum. Um, we threw the question out on uh, Catholic researching uh, groups on the internet, to historians groups, and no one had ever seen a ring like this. No one had any information about it. And it took weeks of researching, but finally, um, in the Christ in Dachau book, which was written by a priest, on page 178, uh, there are two sentences. Um, and it says that these rosary rings were made by the prisoners at the Messerschmitt Commando. Now, the Messerschmitt Commando was the work detail for certain of the Polish lay prisoners. Uh, mostly have been Jews, but also some, some Christian subversives among the Polish laity. And they were made to first dig an underground factory, and then they were made to work all day in the underground factory making Messerschmitt fighter planes. And in the book Christ in Dachau, the priest author confirms that these rosary rings were made in the Messerschmitt factory by the prisoners and that they would make them on the side and in secret. Because in 1941, all the rosaries had been confiscated from all the priests in the priest block and it was against the rules and it could be a, a punishable, potentially a capital offense to be caught with a rosary or saying a rosary. And uh, I know a number of those rings were made, but I think it's probably the only one that is, uh, has a home right now. The others may be someplace in the world we have no idea where they're at. They probably are indestructible, but nobody knows where they're at. But we know where John Predish's rosary ring is. It's here in Tyler. Thank God. Mm -hmm.